We're in the Herbert Lehman Center at Columbia University talking with Linda Gordon, professor of history at New York University. And today we're talking to her about feminism and especially about the second wave of feminism that emerged in the 60s and 70s. Uh, tell us first, how did this second wave happen? The second wave actually began in a parallel way to the first wave. Both of them grew out of black rights movements. The first wave grew out of the movement to abolish slavery. The second wave grew out of the civil rights movement. Many young women, black and white, who participated in the civil rights movement began to see a contradiction. The civil rights movement was all about democracy and everyone was a citizen and should be an equal citizen. But in fact, they became more observant about some of the ways in which women were not equal citizens, both the informal ways in their relationships with people, but the large institutional ways in the way the government treated them. And so out of that uh, came really two streams of a women's movement. One of them, which eventually developed into the organization NOW, the National Organization for Women, developed out of a set of state committees on the status of women. And many of those state committees were actually a formally part of state government as women were just becoming more aware of these inequalities. The early uh, period of those committees and of NOW included a lot of women in labor unions who had been really over time continuing to agitate for equal wages, equal seniority rights, etc. Then there was a, another stream which was much younger. It consisted at first mainly of college women or recent college graduates. Uh, it was dominantly middle class, it was dominantly white, but it was deeply influenced uh, by the black movement. And I think for all of those people, the influence of the black movement was not only about the rhetoric of democracy, but was also a matter of confidence because they had seen how a powerful social movement could really make change. Um, and it was kind of inspirational. And people, I think, gained uh, aspirations as well as confidence from that movement. So if I were going to elaborate on that statement a little bit, I'd want to say that the first part of the movement actually grew perhaps out of the discontent of women in general with their position in the labor force. Uh, that is that uh, the National Organization for Women, which we usually call now, that that organization really was focused on questions of how to create equity, if not yet equality in the labor force by modifying you know, the conditions under which women worked by getting rid of protective labor legislation and so on. And the, one might want to think about that as a really important entryway into what we sometimes call liberal feminism. Yes, although I'm not sure that liberal is quite the right term. It, it's a, a very complicated term, but they were very much focused on what you might call public sphere, women outside their homes, women at work, and what could be done both through negotiations with employers, but also, also through legislation to guarantee a kind of equity for women. And they were, generally speaking, a little bit older, sometimes a generation older, sometimes just a little older. The younger stream consisted of women, many of whom had really never been in the labor force, had not really encountered yet that kind of discrimination. And they were taking up, really for the first time in a very long time, what we might call private sphere issues, issues that had to do with birth control, abortion, equality within marriage, sharing in childcare, as well as the very touchy then issue of violence against women, both sexual violence and 
uh, what we call domestic violence. I find this fascinating because it seems as though in the 1960s, both streams were developing in some ways separately from each other. That's true. So we understand the personal is political in some ways as coming out of that first stream or the stream of women who, the younger women who come out of the civil rights movement and begin to ask the question of what does equality mean for them? And to some extent in those early years, there was some tension between those two streams. Each side would be quite critical of the others. Um, the, the younger people were critical of NOW for not taking up these personal issues. NOW was critical of the young people for focusing on them so exclusively and focusing perhaps very exclusively at first on middle class women. The women's movement had so many different streams in so many parts of the country. I think in many cases, like a lot of social movements, people responded very much to their very local personal situation. And so it looked very different in, in Nebraska from California from New York.